and welcome to Aquarius, which tonight features P.J. Proby, P.P. Arnold and Lance Legault, three fine American singers from the world of pop and rock. We also meet Michael Elliott, co-founder of the 69 Theatre Company in Manchester, one of the most highly admired directors in the English theatre. We have music from two groups called Gas and Bugles, etc. We have a voodoo dance, and you'll be hearing large chunks of Shakespeare's Othello. Now, that's not five different items. We only have one subject tonight, and our subject is a new musical in which all these wildly conflicting elements are combined. It's called Catch My Soul, and its subtitle is The Rock Othello. Like West Side Story, it brings Shakespeare into the 20th century, setting the text to the powerful beat of a rock group and transposing the action to a deep south location where soul music seems the natural idiom. Catch My Soul is the dream child of Jack Good, whose twin obsessions in life apparently have been rock music and acting Othello. A crazy idea perhaps to combine the two, but Jack has the experience of both worlds to make it happen, first in Los Angeles a couple of years ago, and now in England. Jack persuaded pop stars like PJ Proby to take the plunge into the straight theater, and he persuaded straight theater men like Michael Elliott to try something entirely different. He adapted the play himself. He added the idea of a voodoo chorus, which is the wildest thing since the hippie tribe in that musical hair, and he got two young composers, Roy Polman and Emil Dean Zogby, to do the blues and rock numbers. Now, rock music and Shakespeare are perhaps not such wildly contradictory elements anyway. There is a, a relation, a parallel, between the powerful gutsiness of rock music and the tortured soul of Othello, that heroic Negro general roaring like a wounded bull as he's destroyed by the fatal germ of jealousy. Anyway, Jack Good's enthusiasm persuaded us that his Catch My Soul was an adventure worth watching, and we went up to Manchester with our film cameras to spend some time at the rehearsals. Later, we went back to film pretty substantial excerpts from the performance, so you could also get the feel of the work, more or less as the audiences experience it in the theatre. My first reaction was to pick up a guitar, change phone numbers, and leave town so Jack could never find me, so I wouldn't have to say to him, Jack, I can't read this stuff. But that was the first one. After reading it three or four times, I found that it's so well written, it's very hard to say it wrong. How oh, now, Rodrigo? Oh, well, and here's another ingredient in this Americanized Othello. A touch of way down south in Dixie heralds the arrival of Rodrigo. Rodrigo! A long way from Shakespeare's Venice, but still the same character. A rich, indolent, cigar-smoking fool who fancies Desdemona and has paid Iago a lot of dollars to procure her for him. You say Desdemona will soon be mine, but you need to know what's though your words be fine. Very well, go to. It is not very well. I will seek satisfaction of you. You charge me most unjustly. With more by truth. Jewels I've given you by the ton. Very well, go to. Very well. You say my fortunes have just begun. Very well, go to. Very well. You promise results, I find not one. Most jewels would have corrupted a nun. Very well, go to. It is not very well, I will seek satisfaction of you. Will you hear me, Rodrigo? I have heard enough. Despite his bluster, Rodrigo proves a ripe candidate for Iago's conspiracy, easily used and later easily disposed of. Farewell, go to, very well. If she will restore the money up, says I will withdraw and the suit repent. If not, go to, I will not go to, I will seek satisfaction of you. 